Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Maddie, and welcome back to another video. Today, I wanted to go over with you my favorite photo book right now, and why I think using photo books is a great way for photographers and other artists to really gain some offline creative inspiration. I'll be the first to say that often I am on my phone just scrolling Instagram and trying to convince myself that yeah, like I'm following photographers I like, I'm following artists I love and this is really a creative thing. Like I'm just learning and I'm becoming inspired. But to be honest, um, that's not just the case. Often I find myself looking at other people's profiles and associating with them and just comparing my work to them and it's just honestly like the worst thing you can be doing because you just don't know these people and you don't know their history and how long they've been doing it. And so recently I've tried my best to take a little step back from it all and just become a bit more intentional with how I gain creative inspiration. Recently I've found a great way to gain some more offline creative inspiration is through photo books. So photo books are just these amazing bodies of work from amazing photographers who are at the peak of their game and sitting down and Taking your time to appreciate their work is something that I've started to really enjoy and today I thought it'd be great to share with you my favorite photo book right now which is Tales from the Road Less Traveled by Pi Arts. Pai is a Dutch uh, photographer, he's from the Netherlands and he kind of specializes in travel, documentary and a lot of wildlife. This book was loaned to me by my buddy Hugh, so massive thanks to him for uh, letting me have this for a few months. I sadly do need to give it back to him in the next couple of weeks. but. Thank you for that, my friend. Going through this book was such an enjoyable experience, looking at his photos and the stories especially that go along with these photos. His work is something that really resonates with me personally because it's something I'd love to evolve into one day, doing these travel series and documenting, um, yeah, not only your travels, but the people you meet in these places. And that's really what makes the photos so amazing. So we're gonna dive into a bit about the book and how I think it's honestly great to be a bit more intentional about where you seek out creative inspiration. So the book itself uh, is this amazing, thick, large, uh, insanely well put together book of photos from, like he says, the road less traveled. So there's 20 photo essays and documentary series in this book. I'm not gonna go over all of them today because you should just go buy the book or go check it out from a friend like I did. Um, but overall, the main theme of uh, this book would be the diversity of humanity. And that's not me talking, that's what the uh, foreword written by Jessica Wint speaks about, and it's how Pi really finds a way and creating a deeper connection with his subjects. And that really comes through in the images, if you ask me, and it's something that I really appreciated. Like I said, all the pages are really nice and thick and beautiful, and you start to see that instantly when you get to the photos. These aren't just little digital images and pixels that you're seeing. This is just like a really printed image and it feels more final. It feels like a finished product. And it's something really inspiring to me because you see how your photos can really come to an end. Like for me, we're looking at your photos online. They don't look like they're finished. They look like they're just there on display that can be taken away in a moment. Whereas printed images like this, they're just there. Like it's a book, it's there forever. So it's, um, it's really nice. So. Diving in, the first documentary series that I want to talk about and that I absolutely love is called Whispers of Change. So this is a portrait and travel series based in India and it kind of explores the uh, lives of these farmers in this part of the region of India. I'm not going to dive too much into the parts of the uh, stories because that's obviously Pi's work and not for me to share with you all. Um, but what I would say is that the first thing that I noticed about this series that really got to me was the colors. The way that Pi has composed these images, he's really done a great job of using complementary colors and colors that really work well together. So looking at this first image here, we've got the blue sky and like the red of the turbans and the yellow, and it's just spectacular. And as well as the camel, um, the colors just really pop and it's vibrant. And moving through this whole series is just a treat. Like he's just really framed everything beautifully. The full page spreads are awesome. And honestly, the words. So um, if you did get this book, I would recommend sitting down and reading the stories because you create, it creates that uh, connection with the people that um, I was mentioning before. But from a photography side of things and a technical side of things, the work just really speaks volumes to his craft and his dedication to the whole art of it. I think something that really stands out to me is seeing photos in a collection. So when you're scrolling online or looking at images online, you're not always given this chance to see 
a series or an essay and similar characters in similar spaces. <laughs> what you end up seeing is just a variety of images from all over the world. And that's great, it's cool, but sitting down and getting to experience an amazing collection of really nice images from one spot that focus on a theme or a story is honestly the best. And so going through this book and seeing all the images, and especially in this series, you get to really appreciate this little moment that he's gone through. My favorite image from the uh, Whispers of Change series would have to be this one. It is a portrait of a gentleman. It's a full page spread and the way he's lit uh, his subject, it's very cinematic and the colors and the eyesight and it's just beautiful. And seeing it in a full page spread really stood out to me and I'm sure that's why he popped it there. Um, and obviously you've got the text on the other side. So this is really one of my favorite images from this series as well as uh, well, it's hard to pick to be honest, but of this gentleman standing in the farm or oh, in the field here Like you get a real sense of the story and the subject and yeah, it's a fantastic series So like I said, there are 20 uh, photo essays and series in this book and I'm not going to dive into all of them Like I mentioned, but I did want to go over a couple more that really stood out to me and how I gained a bit of inspiration from Pi in this book um, this series called shoot to scare not to kill and it follows the uh, tales of these rangers in Uganda following poachers. I'm, I'm not going to dive into the characters too much again, but um, nor the photos really in this series. But the main thing that really stood out to me was how Pi has really transformed his work into an activist and a conservationist and using his photos and his art to incite real change in the world. If you did follow Pi and his work, uh, I'm sure you can find it. I'll leave it uh, in the links below and you can go see for yourself. But Pi is insanely dedicated to ensuring the survival of a lot of animals and it just really stands out to me how this book and this series is just another way that he can show that and make change through his art. It's honestly insane to think that your work can evolve into something like that and not so much the series itself but the place he is in and what it's documenting really stands out to me as to one of the major things you can do with photography. I think seeing it all in one place like this is honestly so incredible because you get to see like all the places not only he's visited but all the people he's met, interacted with and the stories he's trying to share. I think seeing a big photo book like this is just a real testament to like how long it takes to really achieve some great things in this art form. Like it does take so long and we are constantly just shown like new and great things and how great it can be and how great this person is. And, is honestly not fantastic for us because you look at a book and you think there's no way someone could have done this in a year. Like there's just not enough time, there's not enough seasons. <laughs> there's too many summers. Um, but yeah, like he's just evolved and this is his life's work and I look forward to seeing more. And yeah, I think the best part is that you get to really realize how this isn't an overnight success. This is just time. And that's something that these social media accounts really don't really show. And it's um, something I have tried my best to get around recently because it's something I do fall victim of and I'm sure you're the same. So I'd really encourage you to seek out more of these offline sources of creative inspiration. I certainly tried to do that more this year, getting more into books and I've certainly found it to be way more enjoyable and you get back to why I at least got into photography is just looking at great pictures. You don't need to see an ad. There's no ads here. Um, you pay for it, you get it, this is your like, yours to consume. And so I think by sticking with that kind of mentality of being a bit more intentional about where you find your creativity and where you find your inspiration, like you get to consume really amazing work that isn't just from your favorite uh, young photographers online. Now, I will admit books are expensive and going out and buying a new book every week would be great. I certainly can't afford to do that and I'm not too sure about most of you, but if you are, do you, man, go ahead, I don't care. But like, if you don't, try and do what I do, like go halves with a friend, like see if you can borrow. Um, it sounds crazy, but a lot of photographers would be pretty down for that. Um, but yeah, it's something that I would truly recommend because you get to just feel the, uh, the work of an artist and it's something that I think would be really good in this day and age when it's actually kind of good to get off your phone a little bit more. Overall, I hope that this has been nice. I would encourage you to check out Pi's work. It's insane. Also, even pick up the book yourself. I'll leave a link below and you can go. I'm not, I'll leave it below and you can go check it out. Um, but yeah, think I'm gonna do more of these, see if I can get any more recommendations on any books that you might want me to go through. 
Uh, I didn't want to dive too much into the stories and the images because like I said, it's not my work to share. All I wanted to share today was that it's good to look at books. It's good to look at art from another source other than your phone. And overall, getting off your phone is great these days because if I see another bloody ad, I'm going to flip. So yeah, take a look. Let me know what you think and I'll try and make another one of these soon. Cheers.